before a word is even spoken, people are deciding if they like you and if they trust you. And so much of that comes through in our facial expressions and in our tone of voice and our posture, really how we carry ourselves into the room. So we're of course going to, if we want to be influential, we have to recognize that likability as well as credibility is, is critical. Welcome to Interrupt, where we talk about interrupting the status quo. My name is Linda Yates. I'm your host. I'm also known as the Image Energizer. Today, I'm visiting with Karen Laus, and I loved the insight that she had to give. And you're going to want to check out the show notes because there's so many awesome tips. Please listen in. Welcome to Interrupt. My name is Linda Yates. I'm your host. I'm also known as the Image Energizer. And I have the exciting and lovely Karen La- Laus. Did I say that right? Yeah, Laus oh. like house. Absolutely. Laus like house. Okay, Laus with me. That's a very cool name. I really like how you spell it too. So that's, that's a very cool name. I married into that one. Oh, okay. There you go. And yeah, we're. I am thrilled to have Karen on the, the show with us today. And we're going to talk about how to communicate effectively when you're faced with a challenging expectation. And I know sometimes it, you know, you think, oh, communication, yeah, 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 yeah. But I love as Stevie, Stephen Covey said many, many years ago that, you know, communication is like that soft skill and the soft skills are really the hard skills. And yeah, I, for sure. I'm ex- excited to kind of explore this with you. Good. So, As we jump into this, would you share with us, Karen, kind of who you are and kind of your journey? Sure, absolutely. Well, I think based on our topic today, I need to jump in with the story where I was sitting in a boardroom with my leadership peers as I was on the leadership team for the corporation that I worked for. And I have been speaking on stages all over the world with Google and Facebook and Starbucks and all these big brands. And yet I was stuck in that room, unable to speak. Mm. And I was hemming and hawing and I couldn't get the words out. I literally couldn't get the words out. And the reason why was because of these expectations that I had from my boss to Mm. present on something that I had an internal conflict around. And I remember for months thinking, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem right. But I was taught as a kid, I grew up in a household. I'm the last of nine kids, traditional family. Mm -hmm. My dad called the shots in the household. My mom essentially was submissive in the household. She wasn't submissive in the community. Mm -hmm. But what I learned is that you needed to get permission from someone who was an authority figure. And when you, your boss tells you to do something, you do it. Mm -hmm. And yet I could not, I could not quite get the words out of my boss ended up having to shut down the meeting. And that was mortifying. That was my defining moment of, I don't want this to ever happen again to me. And I want to help all women be able to be confident and speak up. And my boss was also my greatest champion. And she pulled me aside and she goes, Hey, Karen, you didn't trust your gut. She goes, you could have just said, I don't even know why we're doing this in the first place. Let's table this. And that, when she said that, I thought, what? It never (laughs) occurred to me that I could have even questioned it. Mm -hmm. And that was such a powerful reminder for me. So that's, that's a story I like to share because it's one of those things where a lot of times I've noticed also as women, we don't question things. We just Mm -hmm. do what we're told sometimes, Mm -hmm. especially people in my generation. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is so powerful. And that, that is amazing. That is really amazing. (laughs) Yeah. It really was a, one of those moments where, you know, I, and I had such great respect for everybody on the team. Mm -hmm. Everybody like I was liked, I was credible, but I, I had a history of some wavering and such when I was in meetings like that, although Mm -hmm. anywhere else, I was full-fledged confident, and what I realized in my personal growth journey is that 
I was really confident when I knew that I had something specifically of value to offer, such as my professional services. Mm-hmm. When I coach people, and, and just to give a, people a little background, I started my journey in HR. Mm-hmm. I worked for The Gap for many years as a leadership consultant, and then I worked for a wonderful company for 14 years specifically, and I like to say I grew up there, specifically <laughs> in communication and helping people with their executive presence as mm-hmm. well as messaging. So I had this expertise And I was very fortunate to be speaking on stages all over the world and felt very confident doing that. And yet there were some times with certain people, I would feel intimidated. And Mm -hmm. of course, with all of my therapy and such later, I came to realize that my, my boss at the time was essentially very, had very similar characteristics as my dad but I didn't know that at the time. So Mm -hmm. this feeling of, well, I can't question her because she's the authority. And Mm -hmm. I, I, as I've come to learn and the more of the work that I do, I've come to learn that a lot of women have that same issue on some Mm -hmm. level, maybe not as, as full on as me, but it's, it's very relatable more than I would have thought. Wow. Wow. That's, that's very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. That is, I think, extremely powerful. And it's interesting because I'm it kind of brought back to memory a couple of different meetings that I was in and times, quite frankly, where I did speak out and it well, didn't go so well. And so then <laughs> what do you learn from that? Right. You kind of yes. like, oh, maybe I need to bridle it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's the frustrating part, isn't it? Where it's these mixed messages and, and that's actually what compelled me a number of things compelled me to write a book, but the first chapter of my book is all about the mixed messages from my childhood. Mm-hmm. Because the other thing that's interesting is that when I was six years old, my dad gave me a few dollars at a flea market and he said, go have fun, but never pay full price. <laughs> so I had this dad that taught me how to negotiate at six mm-hmm. years old and wow. how to ask for what you want. And the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So I have never had a problem asking for what I want Mm -hmm. in business. Mm -hmm. And yet I had this mom, even though she was, she was known for a lot of leadership roles in the community, but in the household, she really rarely spoke up. And so what was modeled was this idea of, well, you have value when you're delivering a service, Mm -hmm. but when you're just you like in the home, in a personal situation, Mm -hmm. you don't. Wow. And that was a hard thing for me to navigate for many years because mm-hmm. I spent most of my childhood just trying to prove myself and be good enough. And my dad was also pretty critical. And my dad, my mom, as loving and nurturing as she was, she was a hardcore perfectionist. She mm-hmm. had extremely high standards for herself. Mm-hmm. And of course, that's what I learned as well. So when you compare a, a perfectionist mom and a critical dad, <laughs> you feel like you're win? never good enough. Right. Yeah. How, how do you win? Wow, yeah. that that yeah. is. So you know, in with regard to communication, isn't it interesting those things that we learn growing up to kind of carry with us? No one really teaches how to communicate effectively. Right. Exactly. So, what would you say now to yourself that was in that meeting experience? What would you say to yourself now? Oh, what would you do? I I would actually say what my boss mentioned, which was excellent advice, is to stop. Well, first of all. I would go back, follow my own advice. I would go back and question it before the meeting happened. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, I would tell her, I've I've been looking at this. I feel like this isn't the best decision for us to be doing in this format. Mm -hmm. The intentions were good, but the format wasn't the right one. And I Mm -hmm. wish I had questioned that sooner. And the truth is it wasn't a strong directive from her either. She Mm -hmm. said, oh, that sounds like a good idea. And I took that as a directive. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But then what I would do in the moment, which is something I would recommend to anybody else to remember that it's never too late to change course, even mm-hmm. if it's in the moment. Mm-hmm. So I wish I had stopped and said, you know, the truth is, <laughs> I'm not sure why we initially were doing this. I felt like I was just on the train of, okay, we're going to do this, but I think we need to revisit this and table this for another time. That's what I wish that I had done because it was embarrassing to have my Mm -hmm. boss have to come in. And she did it in the most wonderful, kind and respectful way. Uh 
but I knew internally that it wasn't a powerful stance for me. Right. You let yourself down. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank but you. But I will thank say, you. yeah. I, I mean, I will say it was a defining moment though, when I think about, okay, so now my mission to reach 10 million women in the next mm -hmm. 10 years to eradicate self-doubt is, is something that perhaps would not have been birthed if that hadn't mm -hmm. happened. Yeah. So a gift, that gift in that, in that, uh, you didn't let it stumble you, you let it be a stepping stone. That's awesome. That's Thank really you. great. So why does a challenging situation test our ability to communicate oftentimes? Oh, I'd say the big thing is we're often not prepared for it, mm. which is also why I do lots of role plays with my clients. And we are, if we don't have a strategy to know what do I do now, mm -hmm. then we tend to get stuck and not know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so that's why one strategy, when I think of uh, like, what do you do? For example, one of the tips that I give is how to stop rambling and get to the point. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, I, I always say this too in, in humility that I'm a recovering rambler myself, <laughs> but when we catch ourselves where we're stumbling over our words or we're, or we're just off on a rabbit trail and we don't know how we got there, all we, all we, and, and frankly, in any situation where mm -hmm. we're stuck, pause, use the power of the pause. That one second pause can help us to recalibrate. Mm -hmm. And in the case where we are actually talking out loud and rambling, stop, pause, and then say, and my point is this. To help you refocus yourself, but also to help the audience recognize, oh, she has a point, or okay, we are going somewhere here. It helps everybody get back on track. Oh, those so, are great words. And yeah, thanks. my point is this. Yeah, that'll be in the show notes. I know that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, it's helped me a lot. I, honestly, I, I feel like I teach what I have most learned myself. Yeah. Sure. Oh, I hear you. I know. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> do, I do get that. So what is a crisis that tested your ability to communicate effectively? You just shared one without you even knowing kind of where I was going to go with my questions. Is there another <laughs> one? <laughs> <laughs> that I will say that that is the the biggest one, but I will tell you one very early in my career. It's one of those that I was blindsided and I I still to this day don't exactly know what I did that was displeasing or that didn't work. Mm -hmm. But I was asked to facilitate a high profile. It wasn't even facilitate. I mean, I basically got up and spoke at a a breakfast meeting at when I was in my position at the Gap. Mm -hmm. And so very new, I had come off of a late flight the night before doing a training in Atlanta. And I remember basically showing up for the breakfast and getting up and doing my talk. And afterward, the, the woman in charge, she looked very stressed when I got back to the table and mm -hmm. she said, so all nervous. So how do you think you did with sort of this fake smile? <laughs> and I thought there's some agenda here. I said, oh, I thought I did fine. <laughs> I, mean, uh -huh. I, I legitimately thought I did fine. I didn't know that there was anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And she just, she basically said, well, you came in at the breakfast, you should have come earlier. And there are all these things that I, I, it just shocked me. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is that it did, is that it forced me to up my game mm -hmm. because whatever, again, still to this day, there was a lack of clear direction from her. Mm -hmm. but I realized for that next training that I was doing that I needed to be hyper prepared and ask the right questions in advance. Mm -hmm. So for example, and, and, and the fact that I even went to the dinner that night, you know, looking back, I feel like, gosh, for however, for as displeased apparently as they were, mm -hmm. <laughs> I probably in hindsight wouldn't have shown up, but <laughs> the learning for me was this idea of when you think you're pretty good. Or when we get, I, I'd say perhaps my interpretation is that I got a little lazy mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good. I can show up and just do it. And so one thing is to ask the right questions in advance. When do you want me to be there? Because mm -hmm. if your boss doesn't direct you mm -hmm. or your client doesn't tell you what the expectations are, you better take ownership of that yourself mm -hmm. and find out, make sure that you know, so that you cover your bases 
And then the second thing that I would do is, and what I did is really prepared for that next Hmm. training that I did from a content Hmm. perspective, because I wanted to be exceptional. I didn't want to just be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think for Mm -hmm. when I, what I teach women is to stand out and we want to stand out in a way that's positive. In -hmm. that case, I didn't stand out so well in the way that was favorable So the learning for me was, hey, I want to stand out and in a way that people are talking about me in a positive way. And I'm proud to say that about a year later, when I saw her in the cafe, she said, I want you to know I've heard tremendous things about you and how you have really upped your game. She basically said that. So that was really, really powerful for me. That is powerful. That is really great. I love that. I love that. That hyper being that hyper prepared. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's it's not generally in my nature. I I am more of a wing it person, to be honest. <laughs> but it was really good for me. It was humbling. Yeah. Very good yeah. for me, though. Yeah, it's amazing how we grow from those experiences, right? Yes. Yeah, I haven't talked but, about that in years. <laughs> and they're gifts. You know, they really are. Those humbling yeah. experiences really are. They yeah. hurt at the time, yes. but they but they really are gifts. Yes. So, what is effective communication? What do you think effective communication is? Sure. Well, first of all, I think effective communication is when you are understood, <laughs> when, when both okay. parties understand each other. And if I think about that in, in really two camps, one would be how you're coming across with your mm-hmm. body language and your voice, your facial expressions, the behavioral components. And then the other one would be the content ex- itself. Mm-hmm. What is the message that you're saying? Is it clear? Is it concise? Is it mm-hmm. memorable? And then when we look at, so that's from what you can control from the speaking perspective, but then, mm-hmm. well, obviously you can also control what I'm going to say next is the listening component. And you mentioned Stephen Covey earlier. I am a huge fan of Stephen Covey and I love his habit, seek first to understand. Mm-hmm. And if we can come with an ear to understand the other person's perspective first, then we're going to have a lot more success than just trying to get our words in there. So that's how I would encapsulate it. Oh, that's good. I think that, you know, that's not really hard to remember, seek to understand because you want to be understood too, right? You want to, right. You want to be valued and yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I do think that at least the success that I've had in my life is that people feel really cared for in my presence. That's what I hear again and again. And I truly am very interested in people. Mm -hmm. So I, and and my mom really taught me a wonderful lesson and she did it through example, which was Mm -hmm. being uh, inclusive. And I can remember specifically being at a brunch at her church once when I came home, I think from college or something. And it was so memorable because I thought this is just like mom. It's what she always does. So we, we were at this brunch at those typical round tables where you have eight people at a table Mm -hmm. and we sat down and she whispered, she goes, let's make sure to draw that person across the table out because nobody's really talking to her. Wow. So just the awareness of other people around and, and this equates so much to my work of knowing your audience mm-hmm. and, and to your point about how we want to be understood too, that if we start with the intention to understand, then people want to learn more about us. Mm -hmm. But if we start with, here's everything about me, (laughs) we're not as interesting because people are interested in people who care about them. That's very true. I love that. Yeah. That's, that's a really great point. Really great point. So why is good communication important? We've talked about what is effective, but why is good communication important? Do you feel? Sure. Well, we all want to be understood for sure. What we talked about already, but then because we, first of all, we, we want to be seen and heard as individuals. I would say that's an inherent human need. But if mm-hmm. we're thinking about how to make businesses run, how to do well in our jobs, that if we are not able to clearly communicate our ideas, we're not going to get very far. Mm-hmm. And I do think you, know, you mentioned much earlier when we started about this soft skills just the term soft skills, it, it, it kind of makes me cringe to this day <laughs> because it's amazing how we've called them that for so long. Mm-hmm. And yet they really are the thing that 
have people making decisions off. I mean, of course, you've got to have the tactical and the the data mm-hmm. and the information, but people buy on emotion and justify with fact. I mean, that's just mm-hmm. how we are <laughs> wired as human beings. So when we have to recognize that people make a decision and a judgment about us so much quicker than what we what we think and or what we say. So in other words, you know, when you meet somebody, whether it's on a Zoom call or in a networking event, before a word is even spoken, people are deciding if they like you and if they mm-hmm. trust you. And so much of that comes through in our facial expressions and in our tone of voice and our posture, really how we carry ourselves into the room. So we're, of course, going to, if we want to be influential, we have to recognize that likability as well as credibility is is critical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Great, great points. Great, great insight. I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Likability and credibility, for sure. So what are three tips that you use typically in order to communicate with grace? Sure. Well, one of them is to truly listen. Mm-hmm. I think that it's easy to, and, and I, I can tell you too, I've, I've done a really good job faking it at times. Not that I'm trying to fake it, but just being <laughs> totally human, you know, when, when you're in so many conversations in a typical work day and maybe somebody is going on and on, it's, it's hard to stay <laughs> engaged in that. Yeah. And so I like the, the next person can nod and smile and look like I'm interested, <laughs> but let's talk about what's really effective. And so mm-hmm. the one tip that I would say is to be inherent, like just almost, um, what is the word? Just obsessively curious. Maybe that's mm-hmm. not the right word, but okay. really, in other words, be curious. And then what does that look like behaviorally? Well, that means that you ask questions and then you take the time to pause and stop and listen to the answer. And when you listen from the perspective of, if I had to repeat this, could I repeat what the person is saying? Mm, mm, love that. Yeah. You know, I always used to think, you know, it's funny because I, I've taught so many listening classes over the years and I think about it and, and it isn't as much of what I focus on in, in my speaking engagements now, but I do think that it's, it's amazing when someone paraphrases back what you said. Like mm-hmm. I used to think it seems silly. Like, really? Does that really help? And yet every time somebody does it with me, I feel so hurt. I go, yes, that is what I meant. You know, and people will say things like, so just to be clear, let me repeat back what I heard Uh or something. And I do that occasionally, but you know, or I probably do it more when I'm not exactly sure and what they, what they meant. So I'll say something back and go, is that what you wanted me to respond to Mm -hmm. or something like that? So I would definitely be super curious. And then just to recap that one tip is to ask questions and then listen long enough that you're actually paying attention. And along with that essentially is to be present. Mm -hmm. Are you present in that conversation rather than looking over their shoulder for the other person that maybe you really wanted to talk to at the party (laughs) or, you know, whatever it might be. So that's, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking in a networking event or a conference or something like that. And you're engaged in a conversation and it's like, oh, but there's someone over there. You know, it's kind of like squirrel. I know. It's really hard. It's really hard for sure. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. So you wanted three. And yeah. let's see. What is the second? Okay. And this is about, remind me, communicating effectively. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Because I have a good one for, how, well, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to sneak this one in there because it, it is still communicate effectively. But I feel like one of the biggest pain points for people in not speaking up is simply feeling like they don't have the space to do it. Maybe they've got Mm -hmm. a lot of talkers in a typical meeting or how Mm -hmm. do you interject? And so I want to suggest as effective communication in the beginning of a meeting that you speak first. So whoever's Mm -hmm. listening, the tip would be to speak first because so often a meeting kicks off and people say, okay, who wants to start? Or who has a comment and there's Mm -hmm. crickets. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So if you're the one to say, Oh, I have a thought, even if you don't know what it is, start with that. I have a thought. (laughs) And then that second that you say that will give you some time to think about what you're going to say. So I find that that is really effective for getting your voice out there. You'll come across as more of a leader when you speak first. Now, if you are leading a team, I wouldn't speak first Mm -hmm. in that case. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in that case, you want to make sure that you're drawing your team out. 
Mm -hmm. But if you're sitting with your peers, for example, or people that are uh, higher authority from the perspective of title or rank in the mm -hmm. organization, then I would definitely say speak first and make your ideas heard. Because then okay. what often happens is later in the meeting, the whole time you might be wondering, what am I going to say now? Or mm -hmm. maybe the thing you wanted to say has already been said three different mm -hmm. ways, and then it feels <laughs> pointless to bring it up. And as a matter of fact, oh, were you going to say something? No, 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 no. I was just laughing. I was. I had a, this past thought anyway. So. Oh, I, well, I was thinking about a really good example, and this is related to this tip. But there's kind of multiple things in here. I was hired by a large corporation to coach a senior director, mm -hmm. and she was in engineering. And she wanted to move to a different part of the company because she had been there for almost 20 years, and her boss mm -hmm. was in full support of this. So her boss had told me this and uh, this meaning that she wanted to be promoted. Basically, I, I knew, both, and it wasn't necessarily, it could have been a lateral, a lateral move. But the point mm -hmm. is that the woman who had the ability to move her into this other organization, when, when she was asked, well, so what do you think of this person? Mm -hmm. She said, well, first of all, she never shows her face at meetings. This was on Zoom. Mm -hmm. This was during the, or shortly after the pandemic, and she never speaks up. So mm -hmm. how can I possibly make any assessment <laughs> to, to know if she would work right. for my team? And I thought, wow, that is such a powerful, a powerful reminder that in, in every possible scenario, put on your video, people right. need to connect, you know, and that, that power of connection. So I would mm -hmm. say that, that could be another tip here. I know I'm getting a little lost in all of my tips, but, no, you're okay. <laughs> but the, power of the, I know that for a lot of people it's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but to me, it, it's almost like the analogy of going to an in-person meeting with one of those mm -hmm. popsicle faces in front of you, <laughs> like, well, this with your name on it, yeah. because, and again, I, I get it. I, there are times when we don't want to be on camera for privacy reasons, but I would encourage you as much as possible to, to show mm -hmm. your face for sure. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, some great tips, man. Wow, Karen, you know, I think I could be talking to you all day. You have such great insight. <laughs> oh, you really, you really nice. do. So have you ever been interrupted? Oh, yes. Plenty of times. <laughs> and how, how did you overcome that interruption? Would you be willing to share one and how of you course. overcame it? <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I'm, I'm thinking about most of the interruptions, but well, thankfully it hasn't happened in a while. And I, mm -hmm. I believe that there's a reason for that with the things that I have worked on myself and that I teach other women and men too, but specifically what I have found to be the most helpful. So I, I want to share one tip from a proactive measure first. Mm -hmm. And of course this isn't going to work every time, but a lot of times I will have people saying, you know, I get interrupted a lot mm -hmm. and I will ask them, so how is your leadership at that meeting in the beginning? So mm -hmm. when you do speak, do you come across in a way that is powerful with your voice? Do you speak with conviction mm -hmm. or do you speak with a bunch of filler words and you're kind of softer and, um, you know, uh, do you come across in a way that people perhaps don't feel like you're worth listening to? And that's a mm -hmm. horrible thing to have to ask, mm -hmm. but it's something for us all to reflect on. Mm -hmm. Do we come with strength in the beginning? Because I find that when people start speaking, especially if you're leading a meeting, now, of course, mm -hmm. this is why it doesn't always work, because if you're not leading the meeting, then it might be harder. But from the moment that you start speaking, you want to make sure that you are representing yourself in a way that shows your power and your strength. Mm -hmm. And that, that really that balance that all of us have to make between that credibility and connection, because mm -hmm. you know how it is, if we're, if we're too on the side of competence or credibility, we might come across as too hardcore. Mm -hmm. And then we might call a B for, for the women mm -hmm. in the room. And then on the other side, we might come across as a pushover if we're too soft. Mm -hmm. So finding that balance, first of all, is, is really challenging. But that's the thing that I would suggest first. And so what I have found to be helpful when I would be interrupted and things wouldn't work, mm -hmm. then I remember just feeling like, Oh, like I would either shut down pretty quickly mm -hmm. or I would feel like, oh, I mean, it's the same thing. I would feel like I can't say anything more. I would feel hesitant to counter. Mm -hmm. But now I find that the, the, the biggest tip that I would say is if somebody interrupts, 
you can you can either just directly. I mean, there's a few things you can do. So one thing directly is to say, "Oh, hold on, let me let me finish this thought, and then I'll mm -hmm. turn it over to you." Mm -hmm. I think that's a really a uh, great way to say it, and say it with a smile. That's also the challenge. Is there maybe not a clown smile, <laughs> but <laughs> have a lightness to your expression, mm -hmm. because sure. what I have found is that sometimes, just generally, men and women. When we are thinking too hard about something, mm -hmm. <laughs> we have that furrowed brow on our face uh -huh. and we don't look very approachable. So this is where we can be criticized if somebody, if we say, hey, hold on, and we have this furrowed brow, we might look like we're mad at the person mm -hmm. or we're just an irritable person. And if, but if you say it, like even just raising your eyebrows, oh, hold on a second, like you're mm -hmm. interested in what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. But you're being clear on your own authority to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to finish here just a moment. And or you could use the empathy bridge, which I find very useful, which is to empathize with something that they've said. So if they interrupt, oh, yeah, that's that's a great idea. You always have great ideas, Bob. Hold on a second here. And I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to it's very similar, but then you know, I'm going to finish what I have to say here and then I'll I'll be fit and I'll be done or however you want to say that. But the empathy bridge idea is that you empathize or acknowledge what someone has said, mm -hmm. and then you bring it back and redirect to your point of view. Oh, man, powerful. So powerful. Yeah, that some great, some great thoughts today, Rita. So thank you. And I'm going to, uh, Rita, <laughs> I was just thinking of your colleague that I actually, <laughs> so sorry about that's that, okay. Karen. No problem. Oh, that's horrible. That's horrible. That's Please fine. forgive me. No problem. <laughs> I, so I get it. <laughs> Talk about conversations going on in your head, right? With all these different... I don't know who I'm talking to today. So there's a lot of stimulus around us, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you've been very gracious to me, so thank you, Karen. Oh, you've I'm been so some... glad to be here. Awesome, awesome insight. So I want to encourage everyone to check out the show notes, so you can also connect with Karen. And Karen, thank you for coming on the show today. You, You're you've welcome. Been phenomenal, a chat. Thanks, Linda. I appreciate it very much. All right. It was so great having Karen on the show today. I know I learned so much from her and probably one of my biggest takeaways was to speak first. If you're not leading the meeting, be sure to get your idea out in the open first. I love that <laughs> that's gold right there. I'm sure you took out a lot of insight as well and tips. I know I definitely did. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, we'd encourage you to do so. We'd also encourage you to check out our Facebook group page called Interrupt. We'd love to have you continue the conversation there. And we'd be so honored to have you give us a rating review wherever you listen to your podcast that we would be very we'd be very excited and thrilled and humbled by that review and reading. We appreciate you. We appreciate bringing you this different insight, these amazing women leaders throughout the world. Now, I want to remind each of us that we each have strengths waiting for us to uncover, possibilities to realize so that we can accomplish not just our goals, but our dreams. For I truly know that with God, nothing is impossible. Have a great week, everyone. Take care, y'all. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.